Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing my recipe for saltfish bara. Now, this is a little something I came up with because we had a little piece of saltfish sitting in the fridge, so I decided why not throw it into some bara and make something different with it. So this has all the traditional flavors of a regular fluffy bara with the addition of that saltfish, which adds a nice little meaty texture to it and honestly just brings up that taste to a whole nother level. As you guys can see, they're super fluffy on the inside. I served it alongside some homemade mango sour and they were absolutely perfect for a nice little after dinner snack or pre-dinner snack. So I hope you guys enjoy. I'm going to start off by getting all of my fresh seasonings and vegetables prepped to make the bara. So I'm going to start off by cutting up some poi bhaji. Now this is poi bhaji that I had in my garden. For anybody in America, you can find this at your local Asian grocery stores. It's also known as Malabar spinach. But by all means, if you couldn't find the poi bhaji aka Malabar spinach, you can use a little bit of frozen chopped spinach or you can chop some fresh baby spinach, whichever one you have on hand. And I'm also going to chop up some scallions. Now scallions in Bara, they are optional. My grandmother adds it, but if it's summertime and it's very hot and you're serving this Bara, we don't recommend that you put it in, especially if it's going to be sitting out for a long time. If you're making this just at home for a small batch, totally fine. But if it's going to be sitting out for a long time, this might make it spoil, so you might not want to put it in. And once you get the bhaji as well as the scallions chopped up, it's time to pound or grind your fresh seasoning. So I have some weary weary peppers, some garlic, as well as some thick leaf thyme. So I'm just putting those into my mortar and pestle. And basically, I'm just going to keep on pounding these ingredients until they are a fine paste. Now, if you have a little food blender or a food processor, you can put these in and grind them up. But I find that my mortar and pestle works great. I got this mortar and pestle from the people over at Terra. If you want to purchase this mortar and pestle, I'll have the link to it in the description box down below for you guys to check out. Once all of your fresh ingredients are prepped and ready to go, we're going to make the batter or the dough for the bara. So in a large bowl, I have some all-purpose flour. I'm going in with some split peas powder, also known as dal powder. And if you want to find this, you can head on over to buyeasy.com and you can purchase any of your West Indian products or pantry staples and they'll be sent right to your door. I'll have all of that information in the description box down below. And trust me, split peas powder is a great thing to have in the kitchen because it's perfect for any of your fried goods. So I'm also going to go in with a little bit of roasted ground jeera, also known as cumin. I'm going in with some salt and pepper to taste. The black pepper is totally optional, not traditional to bara, but I like to add some in when I'm making the saltfish one in particular. And at this point, I'm going in with a little bit of baking powder and I'm going to go in with yeast. Now some people, they just like to use yeast, some people just like to use baking powder, or some people use a combo of both. My grandmother taught me to use both. Trust me guys, when you add both, it adds such a nice fluffiness and the perfect texture to the bar, so try it out. And once you've added in all of your dry ingredients into the bowl, you're gonna go in with some cleanly washed hands and you're gonna mix them up really well. And I almost forgot, but one of the main stars of the show is a little bit of dye, also known as turmeric. Now you have to add this into the bara to get that really nice yellow color and if you don't add enough in, the bara will not get nice and brown on the outside as well. And at this point I am going in with my freshly chopped poi bhaji, remember you could use any other type of chopped spinach you have. I'm also going to go in with my chopped scallions as well as that fresh seasoning that we ground up. And at this point I also went in with my salt fish. Now I'm using just regular saltfish from the grocery store. I boiled it for a little bit, I rinsed it out really well, and then I broke it up into small pieces. As usual, all of the ingredients and measurements will be down in the description box below. And now I'm gonna keep on adding water until I get a very, very thick batter. So this is the amount of water that I added in. Remember, I cannot give an exact measurement because every type of flour is gonna absorb the water differently. But basically you want to add in enough until you get a sticky dough like texture. You definitely don't want it to be very thin or runny or else the bar will be very oily when you go to fry it. So once you get a thick consistency like this, you're going to start to beat it a little bit. By beating the bara, it allows that bara to get a really nice fluffiness and a really nice texture by the time it's done cooking. It adds to the softness of the bara. So make sure you beat it for at least one to two minutes. And once your bara dough comes together and you get that desired texture, go ahead and take your finger, just dip it in and give that bara dough a taste. The reason why we do this is just to make sure it has enough salt and enough seasoning so this way we do not have plain tasting bars. Once you're happy with the taste, go ahead and cover it up with some plastic wrap or a paper towel and you're going to let it sit for about an hour or two until it doubles in size. 
So it's been about an hour and a half and my bar of dough doubled in size. So at this point, I'm going to add some oil to my karahi or my heavy bottom pot and I'm going to allow it to heat up on a medium, medium high heat so I can start frying my bar. As you guys can see, my bar of dough definitely doubled in size after sitting for that hour and a half. By all means, if it takes two hours, allow it to sit for two hours, hours for it to double in size. But sometimes your bar of dough will not rise and that is totally fine. What I find is that when you're in a very cold climate, like if I was in New York during the winter time and we make bara, the dough doesn't really raise that much. That just happens with the yeast sometimes, and usually when you fry it, it still puffs up. So do not lose hope. Go ahead and still fry it after the two hours, and it will be totally fine. Once your oil is nice and hot, it's time to fry the bara. So as you guys can see, I have a little bowl off to the right there, and it's filled up with a little bit of oil, just regular canola oil, just like I'm using to fry. I'm gonna go ahead and rub my fingers with that oil, grab a piece of my bara, which is about two to three tablespoons of the dough, and I'm gonna spread it in between my fingers. Now, I'm just gonna spread it until I get a nice flat, rounded shape, and that's exactly how I wanna make my baras. If you wanna make these into little balls, you could, but then it would sort of be like a saltfish pilori, Bara usually has a flatter look to it, so that's why I form them just like this. And trust me, you form them just like this, they will have the perfect surface area of crunchiness on the outside and just the right amount of fluffiness on the inside. So I'm going to continue adding them into my pot. Remember, you do not want to overcrowd your pot. I think I'm going to fit about six in mine because if you overcrowd your pot, the temperature of the oil will go down and become cooler and then all of your bars will suck up a lot of oil and that is not what you want. So as I said, for my pot, I dropped in about six baras, and after you're done dropping them in, by the time you're done dropping the last one, you should be able to start flipping them because you should see a golden round ring along the bottom. Basically, you want to keep on flipping them and turning them around until they are nice and dark golden brown on all sides. If you find that as soon as you're adding in the baras, they start to get very dark and almost black, then you need to lower down your heat because that means that they're just burning on the outside and they will be raw on the inside. All of the bubbles that you're seeing here, that's the perfect amount of heat that should be on the baras. So this way you can get the perfect crispiness on the outside and they will be cooked through on the inside. So at this point, once they've all achieved a golden brown color, they've puffed up really well. I'm gonna take them out of the oil and train them in a bowl that I've lined with some paper towels. And once you finish that first batch of baras, you're going to go ahead and start dropping in the rest into your oil and continue cooking until all of your batter is done. Now, by all means, what helps the most is when you have one person tossing it into the pan and one person turning at the same time. For me, I did it by myself, but if you are a first timer, trust me, go ahead and have somebody else helping you. The process will go by much quicker. So I just wanted to show you what my bara looked like on the inside. Now this saltfish bara was so delicious and I was craving bara for a little while. I wanted something a little different, so I put this together. Once I broke into it, you could see all of that fluffiness. You could see a little bit of saltfish running through, all of that bhaji, the scallions. And as soon as you guys eat this, all of the flavors are so balanced and so perfect. That saltfish added a nice little meatiness and the perfect flavor to the bara. Now, by all means, if you wanted to tweak any of the ingredients, such as the garlic, the pepper, the bhaji, anything like that, feel free to do so and make it your own. Now, I wanted to also add that by adding the saltfish into this bara, it made the bara extra crispy on the outside. All those little pieces that you see on the outside of the bara, that is the saltfish and it got nice and crispy in the oil. It was perfect once I dipped it in my mango sour and my family truly, truly enjoyed it. So if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a nice big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you are not subscribed yet. And of course, keep leaving your amazing comments down below. And I will be seeing you guys soon in my next video. Bye everyone.